Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Drobo Broadcast Network. My name is Mario Biondini at Drobo, and today we're talking about Windows disaster recovery with replication using double take availability. And our question for everybody is are you protecting everything that you should? Uh, we're about to find out. So, on to uh, today's topic. The abstract for today is about data protection, specifically replication. I think everybody knows that protecting data is very important, but cost and complexity do keep particularly smaller companies and departments from doing high availability and replication for their most critical data. And backup is important. Replication isn't necessarily a replacement for that, but it can't provide the type of uh, failover time that a lot of people want when it comes to their most important applications. And this broadcast will examine uh, DR, particularly in Windows environments, and present an easy and affordable approach to DR with replication. And joining us today is a guest expert from Vision Solutions. Uh, Joe Spencer's been in IT for almost two decades, and uh, most of that time with DoubleTake and Vision Solutions, which together they've recently combined forces as companies to uh, create a suite of replication solutions across Windows, Linux, and other environments. And DoubleTake is really recognized as the market leader in host-based replication and recovery. So welcome to the program, Joe. How are you doing? Great. Hey, thanks. It's good to be here, Mario. Thanks for having me today. We wanted to have you because as we look at disaster recovery for SMBs, a lot of folks probably aren't doing it for all of their data. And, and we're here almost a decade after 9-11. There's a lot of requirements to do DR. And I think a lot of people are doing backup. Really, when do people want to move from doing backup into doing disaster recovery using replication technology? Yeah, great. Great question, Mario. So, you know, disaster recovery, I think, is a relative term, right? And, and that can take on many facets or, you know, many, many styles of terminology moving data off-site, essentially. And, and again, there are multiple reasons to consider different and better ways of doing disaster recovery. And what replication provides is really a much quicker or tighter recovery point objective and recovery time objective over, you know, the traditional nightly backups. So when companies have a need to keep applications highly available online, that's when it's really time to start considering replication and, and again, application availability. And as your point says, you know, this is not a necessarily a replacement for traditional backups, which are still very important, you know, for most businesses today. Well, you brought up two terms. RTO and RPO, the time objective and point objective. Can you describe those real briefly for those who may not be familiar with those terms? Certainly, certainly. So recovery point objective is, is essentially measured in data loss. Quick example, uh, most people are familiar with nightly backup to either disk or tape. So if you were to lose an entire system and have to recover from last night's backup, your recovery point objective could be 24 hours or 24 hours of data loss. Recovery time objective is simply from measured in the time it takes to recover the application or the workload, if you will, from the time of the disaster. And I think that that then just is the manual effort or how long it takes to get the stuff back up because a lot of times you hear vendors talking about synchronous versus asynchronous, and synchronous provides you a better recovery point objective and recovery time objective. It can be really confusing. How would you describe the difference then between synchronous and asynchronous for customers, particularly for small and medium businesses who haven't yet even gotten started with DR? Exactly. And there are two critical or key points to the whole replication conversation. There are two types of replication, synchronous and asynchronous, as you mentioned. And quite simply, it's the requirements to accommodate the synchronous type of replication. So synchronous replication has a very, very tight or um, really no tolerance for latency. Uh -huh. It is a real-time copy to another location or another system, if you will, in real time. And then asynchronous replication is going to be a little um, less stringent on things like latency and bandwidth, which will allow you to do replication in the background without impeding or imposing you know, overheads on the system. And both of them can give you good RTOs and RPOs? Mario, absolutely. So, you know, asynchronous replication can certainly give you um, the, the same level of recovery point objectives and recovery time objectives as synchronous, right? And again, without the, the additional requirements to accommodate synchronous replication. Well, at uh, Drobo, we're always asking folks to think about shared storage when they may have 
previously been in a uh, direct attached storage model or uh, using some sort of other technology. And uh, we feel that from a disaster recovery perspective, uh, having shared storage provides a lot of flexibility in that you have your storage pooled in, in one environment and you can better protect it being in one centralized place. And it also allows, as we'll discuss here uh, later on in the presentation, for a robust site-to-site -site type of solution as well. So as we go here to the next slide to compare the different approaches, uh, there, there's pretty much three buckets, uh, if I understand it correctly, Joe. You have the server-based or host-based replication, an appliance that's in your SAN, or the disks themselves that replicate. And all three of them can do the job. Maybe you can uh, contrast some of the differences between the technologies. Certainly, absolutely. There's even maybe even a fourth bucket, which is a little smaller, which would be even application replication, which some applications have this technology built into it. Oh, correct, yes. So, yeah, absolutely. So, so depending upon, you know, the, the environment and the requirements, each of them have, you know, really a play that, that makes sense for, you know, individual customers. So with host-based replication, it can be, you know, real-time or very near real-time, again, with that, that very tight recovery point objective. And again, it's, it's, it's typically software-based and it's typically hardware-independent. Then again, you have your SAN to SAN replication, which again is near time um, or, or very near real time. And that can take two forms in the form of synchronous and asynchronous. And, and then again, disk to disk replication, which is near real time. And, and the differences are typically host based is a lot more flexible in the configuration, where SAN or SAN appliance replication is usually pretty tight in the fact that it takes identical devices that can replicate to each other. So now you're doubling your, your potential hardware cost or purchase just to create SAN-based replication. And equally with disk-based replication, first you have to support it or, or the, the hardware has to support it, and then typically they can only replicate to each other as well. Well, some of those constraints, Joe, have been the reason why a lot of uh, smaller departments or smaller companies haven't been able to do DR. We show the entry cost, meaning the smallest possible configuration you can procure to get a solution that does DR. And host-based replication offers the most affordable entry price for getting into a configuration. Is there anything that uh, you're getting from a, a SAN appliance or a disk replication that you can't otherwise get from a server-based or host-based replication? Um, that's a good, great point. So typically, you know, the host-based replication will provide all of the same level of functions, recovery time objective, recovery point objective, as, again, the appliance-based or the disk-to-disk -disk replication. And, and, again, as your graph shows, it, it's typically, you know, per server going to be um, a lot less money. Mm -hmm. And it's going to give you, again, you know, as, as again, as your... Um, as your graphic depicts recovery times in, you know, anywhere from less than an hour to around 10 minutes um, for recovery time objectives. So, again, you're going to get a lot of the same recovery point and time objectives from host-based replication. It offers uh, good scalability, if not very good, compared to the other solutions. And from a management perspective, I know that it might be per server. In small environments, that doesn't pose uh, very much of a management overhead. In the case of uh, your application, uh, Double Take Joe, uh, the management, even if you have several instances across several servers, is still fairly straightforward. Absolutely. So, you know, the, 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 the management or is, is really centralized with, again, Double Take in the host-based arena. What is per server, again, is, is the configuration and setup of each individual host replication and failover. The overall management can be or is from one interface, and the scalability is very good. You just need to add appropriate licenses as you bring new servers into this Tier 1 replication and failover environment. And we'll talk a little bit more about the specific configuration, how you put that together, but smaller companies have historically been roadblocked from a lot of these capabilities because of the entry cost, and today's broadcast aims to bring you with some information on how you can put an affordable solution that's also easy to manage uh, together. So I appreciate you uh, helping out, Joe, talking about these topics with your expertise. From a basic architecture perspective, there's not a whole lot of components that you really need. A lot of the stuff you may already have in your environment, correct? That is correct. In, in, in a lot of cases, you know, again, with the longevity of double-take software solutions in the Windows and, and arena, you know, a lot of times we used to see before virtualization and before things like Drobo that they come into, you know, an affordable price range for a lot of SMB customers. 
used to be that customers would literally cycle their old production servers to DR and then bring in, you know, the, the latest and greatest hardware to replace that production server. Again, they were just shuffling hardware, and nine out of ten customers already have this equipment in place. Right, and that hardware independence of the host-based approach enables you to recycle that hardware in that case. Correct, Mario, absolutely. And, and in some cases, you know, as I can lay out examples from a double-take solution perspective is we can even assist in, you know, making these migrations real-time from old hardware to new hardware. So for the required elements that you'll need to put a solution together, you'll have your servers, which are uh, likely in place. If you don't have servers to fail over to, naturally there would be some incremental investment required to put some servers in place. But as mentioned, uh, with a host-based approach that's hardware independent, you can use uh, potentially older servers or uh, some lower cost servers to create your failover environment. You'll need some storage devices, two or more, and we recommend SAN storage to give you the flexibility and the pooling that you'll need to have the full flexibility and within a virtualized environment to have the mobility that you're going to get with you know, the uh, Essentials Plus uh, vSphere license. You're going to want to have a SAN. Shared network's an important part and uh, for folks who've seen some of the uh, historic DR solutions that large enterprises have been accustomed to, fiber channel fabric, FCIP extension over the WAN would be required if it's fiber channel storage, so there'd be some uh, extra pieces there, and then replication capabilities. I think the purpose of today's program is to go into a lot of detail around the replication so folks understand the important criteria when they're going out and selecting a replication solution. Going on to the requirements, you know, I, I believe that sand storage is uh, a must in these environments. What are the top criteria in your mind that you really need to look at if you want to pick the right solution if for a SMB or for a small departmental replication solution? What are, the, what are the criteria that you often consult with customers on selecting? Absolutely. And as a solutions architect, I'm consulting with customers and prospects every day in architecting the most beneficial solution for their environment. In, in today's economy, I believe that, you know, you, you've got it right. Number one is cost effective. And, and that, and as you've already mentioned, that has been, you know, a prohibitive um, roadblock for off-site DR and replication. So number one is a cost effective solution and then a, a reliable solution for protecting your critical data, right? So a, a company or a solution that is proven and, and reliable in, in the industry. Right. In terms of performance, though, I think a lot of people when they're selecting particularly storage solutions, the first questions that come to mind are always about performance, IOPS and cash and all this sort of other stuff. What do you normally tell customers when they're trying to think about the category of performance required for DR? Because you don't necessarily need, you know, Metro Ethernet, you know, or a, a, an OC3 in order to do DR, do you? That is absolutely correct. So, you know, again, this, this solution, you know, double take solution is really geared for anywhere from the small to enterprise. And, and it, it, that's exactly right. With replication, doing it officially over a wide area network, right, you can absolutely do tier one critical application replication over smaller networks, T1s for an example. You don't have to have dark fiber or metro ethernet. Mm -hmm. And equally, right, the misconception is, is that I may have this high-end storage device for an example or server in my production environment, so I have to match it on the other side. And, and quite simply, Mario, the answer is no. I could put something maybe less performance on the other side because if you look at the end of the day, your, your wide area network connection is, is your bottleneck. You have other factors versus, you know, the right speed of the disk that, that they're going to bottleneck the solution. Right, and the, the cost, uh, if you look at all the things in total for a replication solution, that WAN recurring charge on a monthly basis is probably the biggest line item in the budget certainly can be, especially, you know, when, when you start talking about large metro ethernets and, and large connections, certainly can be a big cost. All right. So that's why uh, both uh, DoubleTake and Vision Solutions as well as Drobo feel that iSCSI and host-based replication is a great approach and match for the criteria for small and medium businesses and for departments within larger organizations. As we go to the next slide, Joe, I love to put Archimedes lever here because the average IT person in a small environment it's one person against the world and they really have to leverage technology in order to get all the things done that they have to do on a daily basis so for this single person that's got a, wearing a lot of hats and may not be a expert 
in their application or DR, what are the concerns that they really need to be aware of so they're choosing the solution that's right for them? Certainly. Great question. Um, so you're looking for a solution, one, that is easy to implement, mm -hmm. easy to support, right? You're also looking for um, a, a product that doesn't have a lot of, you know, again, these hardware-dependent requirements. So I can do failover amongst different types of hardware, physical and virtual equipment. And then obviously bandwidth is always a concern, which latency plays into that as well. So, you know, most people are looking for a trusted advisor from the DR companies that says, do an analysis, here's what I have. Help me with my bandwidth requirements. You know, and equally, where do I replicate and fail over to? That's always a concern. And so with host-based replication, a lot of times this is, you know, another facility the company already owns. So you're not necessarily required to go to someone's co-location data center. So, you know, again, concerns are bandwidth, hardware failover, and then the ease of implementation and ongoing administration. I think it's fair to say that any of those DR solutions that we talked about before, appliance, uh, disk to disk or host base, all have built into them over the years technologies and characteristics that help optimize data transfer over a wide area network. Uh, we all know that bandwidth's not unlimited and there's always uh, the chance for latency and uh, dropped packets in the internet. So when it comes to things like bandwidth and latency, what are the things that customers need to look for in the products they select? I, I assume they need to make sure they're selecting a technology that's providing compression and other WAN optimization capabilities in the products. So they don't have to go source that separately. Exactly. So real-time replication offers some optimization, WAN optimized functions and features, again, specifically from DoubleTake. So when choosing a solution, is it real-time replication versus snapshot based replication versus, you know, is it, is it application journaling or log shipping, which is, again, built into some applications. So you're looking for the most efficient replication engine that you can find. And, and that's going to ultimately reduce, you know, the, the bandwidth requirements. So, you know, compression built in, some things like bandwidth limiting or the ability to throttle transmission to play friendly on the bandwidth with other um, business components. All that stuff starts to sound complicated. I think that's why a lot of people are maybe a little bit intimidated about DR because there's all those moving parts that are in there. Looking specifically at the double take solution, do you have to do a lot of configuration of how the compression works or whether or not you need to do certain throttling? How much of that stuff's just built in and just works out of the box? Great question. So double take replication certainly has bandwidth limiting built in and it also has compression built in. And it's a configurable option. It's not an upcharge. It's part of the product, you know, as we say, whether you use it or not. Mm -hmm. and, and quite simply, being host-based, different types of data will compress differently. And, and one of the things with host-based replication that you get is flexibility. Mm -hmm. And the fact that if you're replicating, for an example, databases or mail servers, that type of data by nature compresses very, very well. Other types of data, for an example, like CAD drawings or images, by nature, that type of data does not compress at all. Mm -hmm. So with host-based replication, I can pick and choose what I do or do not try to compress. And then obviously, in based upon importance of systems and or the WAN environment with double-take solutions, you can also enable this bandwidth limiting. So you, know, you, you can tell it to only use a certain percentage of the wide area network during business hours, maybe a different percentage after hours and weekends. And that type of stuff's readily available through the GUI. There's not a lot of uh, complex configuration there. I guess my question would be, for someone who's never done DR before, uh, is it something that the average person can do, or do they need to hire an expert in order to be able to implement that? Certainly, Mario. Um, with DoubleTake, uh, all, all of the configurations can or are wizard-driven. So you're really plugging in when you set up protection for a specific system, you're plugging in the compression values while you're building the job. You're setting up things like the bandwidth limiting while you're building the job. So it's a one-time configuration. You, you set it and really you forget it. Fantastic. And you mentioned before that hardware independence uh, certainly is important. This is for physical and virtual. These technologies, uh, while we talk about them in general, apply equally to physical servers or virtualized servers. That, that's correct, absolutely, and, and, and even, you know, farther down, physical, virtual, and even different makes and models of physical equipment, so, and, and also storage, so completely hardware independent. 
Um, with a double-take solution, a, again, it's, it's an agent that installs into a Windows operating system or, or Linux, as we mentioned, some other flavors. But with, with double-take, it's, it's agent-based or software-based. Whether the, the system on either side of the equation that we're replicating from or to is physical or virtual. All right, and that's a great segue to how replication works. We're showing here a diagram of uh, how the operating system is built on top of the hardware layer, and the double-take software as a host-based replication fits between the file system and the operating system and does the work to transmit the data across the WAN and keep the data synchronized. That, that's correct. There's a really a couple key points to this slide. One is... Um, it's software-based, so the four blocks, as you mentioned, are the way that the software see, recognizes a Windows server, whether it's physical or virtual. Um, and, and the real magic here for, for DoubleTake is this real-time replication engine, which is also known as a Windows filter driver. Mm -hmm. And what it allows the software to do is only see the writes. So, so if you kind of step back and take it from the beginning, the way DoubleTake solution is implemented, is the software is installed on both sides of the equation. The system we're protecting, the source, and the system we're going to replicate and fail over to, the target. It is IP-based replication, so as long as you have a routable IP address between the two systems, double-take and replicate to or from it. It can be a point-to-point. -point. It could be over the Internet, which is unsecure, or more likely or most likely a VPN, a point-to-point -point VPN over the Internet, which is secure. When you set up the job, because DoubleTake allows you to get very, very granular in your replication scheme, meaning I, could, I can select individual files or folders or volumes or the entire system. Unlike the other technologies, SAN appliances and disk to disk, it's really an all or nothing. If the data is on the disk that's being replicated, it goes across the wire whether you want it to or not. With DoubleTake, you can get very granular in what you do or do not replicate. The, the key factors here in real-time replication is once you select the data or the, the, the replication job, there's this initial mirror or sync of the data that takes place one time. Mm -hmm. And this is really the differentiator. Once that initial data sync is complete, it's replication or moving of just the byte level changes. Our, the, the filter driver is able to see all writes that happen on the Windows system, and it's able to determine, one, is it a write versus a read, and two, is it a file? Is it a change to a file or an area that you that you've configured double take to protect? Two positive confirmations or a yes and a yes, and it replicates just the changes and applies the change to the file on the other side. And it does that with the uh, compression and the bandwidth limited capabilities built in to uh, keep it you know very sustainable, allowing you to do it over a less than giggy net network. Right? You mentioned T1 and uh, can often be fine. That, absolutely. And again, since it's only moving the data once and then simply just moving the changes, it allows it to, you know, be very, very efficient over, you know, any kind of an IP network, specifically wide area networks. Well, we've got two examples here. Talk to us about what we need to know about full server protection and failover, because uh, we'll provide a second example of just data only. What do we need to know about full server protection? Certainly. So a, a little history. Double Take started in the Windows market, again, way, way back 17 plus years ago in the early NT days. Um, at that point, the next example actually will show, you know, what we call application failover or only replicating the data. Something very unique to double take software replicate or availability failover is the ability to replicate the full server. And, and this is very, very desirable for DR and for migration simply because, you know, it is, again, hardware agnostic application agnostic or independent, and it can go any physical or virtual as long as it's, you know, both sides are windows. The other, the, the most desirable part is when building a DR strategy, this target system that we're going to replicate and fail over to, you just start out with a base windows operating system and double take on the DR system. You don't have to know how to install a bunch of applications and patches and make sure or wonder if you installed it all correctly. It's done via full server replication and failover. And this means with full server failover, we're able to replicate the Windows OS, the registry, the application binaries, and the data. So for an example, if my production system were running Microsoft Exchange, my target system in this scenario is only running Windows and double take, when a full system failover occurs, the target system is now renamed as the source machine. It is re-IP'd as the source machine if you want it to be, and it's now running Exchange. So it is absolutely a full system failover at the appropriate time. 
All right, now contrasting that with data protection and failover only. Pre-install the target application, so there's a little more administrative work on the front end. Very light on the network simply because in a Microsoft Exchange environment, I'm only replicating the data. And it can provide for a, f a faster possible failover because your application is already over there. Uh, maybe talk a little bit uh, more about the recovery because you mentioned that can, this can happen in less than an hour, even less than 10 minutes for a, lo a lot of scenarios. That, exactly. So equally a part of the software, regardless of if you set it up for full server failover or the data protection only example here, is when we have a failover mechanism or monitoring option that takes place. So when a failover is initiated, either automatically or manually, double take in this case will literally start the SQL application as we've, as we've established. It's already installed and turned off. At failover time, the, the application is turned on and then the users are re redirected to the target system. So from the time you say yes to failover, the time it takes SQL to start and come online is really effectively your failover time, matter of minutes. Great. I think that's the type of service level folks are interested in, which is why they want to do DR. Uh, as we put it all together here on this slide, it shows you an example of doing DR with 16 terabytes of SAN and replicating between servers across your corporate IP network within a site, a campus, or between sites. Uh, the replication software, as Joe mentioned, is installed there as part of the virtual machine servers or physical servers and replicates between uh, the two sites. We're giving you an example here of what array-based replication might be. A fantastic solution if you can afford it. It's one of the nicer type of technologies to use, disk-to-disk -disk replication, but even in its smallest possible configuration here, we're seeing that uh, it's over 50,000 U.S., in this case, 60,000 U.S. just to buy two storage arrays that are capable of doing that disk-to-disk -disk replication. For SMBs and departments within larger organizations, you can do, using Double Take Availability and Drobo Elite, the same amount of storage and the same replication capabilities between uh, two servers running five VMs at a cost of about $22,000 or 63% less expensive. And for the millions of folks who cannot afford uh, some of the higher cost storage solutions that do DR, there is Double Take with Drobo. One thing that we don't show here, Joe, is uh, protecting with Double Take the physical server itself. We're just uh, using the virtual guest five pack license. Uh, it wouldn't be much more to also protect the server or go to an unlimited license. You'd still be less than half the cost, right? That, that's correct. So, I mean, ultimately you're looking at two additional double take licenses to protect the, the virtual center servers as well as the five guests. And uh, still, so the, the, uh, a lot, a lot of, of protection, uh, less than half the cost of uh, going with an alternative solution, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to bring you today's broadcast. So uh, that brings us to our top questions. For small environments, let's use that example that we just had, less than 100 users and about five VMs they want to have protected between two sites. How much bandwidth do you realistically need? Is this the case where you need Metro Ethernet or can you use existing WAN circuits that you may already have in place? Yeah, that's a great question. It's probably the number one question that I get is how much bandwidth do I need? And, 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 and honestly, it's, it's not a yes or no question. But from my experience, you know, 14 plus years of double take that, you know, five systems replicating 100 users or less, a T1 is going to be sufficient. And again, the difference with double take is because I don't, they don't move the entire data multiple times, hence nightly backups across the wire. It's very efficient, you know, real time byte level replication that makes that possible. And you, uh, you've been around for a couple decades, so you have clients that are likely you know, on opposite sides of the world using your solution to replicate data. Looking for, uh, you know, a smaller company, what would be a practical distance if they're going to put some replication in place? Maybe they already have a branch office on the other side of town or something within the same, uh, within their state or the same local geographical area. What's a practical distance when you're talking to smaller customers on the distance between two sites or the latency you can tolerate between uh, the two sites for replication? Yes, sure, absolutely. So, you know, with double take, I see a little bit of everything. I, I, we have customers today obviously replicating across town and, and certainly across the world. I think for most SMBs, right, most, most are going to have some other facility across town or maybe in the next city, you know, the next city or even in a different state. Um, I, I think 50 miles seems to be a good number. 
But, you know, it, the, the key is getting your data far enough away from your primary facility that if, you know, disaster happens or, or electric issues happen that the other facility is self-sustaining so you can fail over to it and continue business. If you have any questions for our guest expert or for Drobo at all, you can send uh, those uh, questions to TV as in television at Drobo.com or uh, send us a tweet on Twitter at Drobo and we'd be happy to get back to you in terms of any questions you might have. The key takeaways for today's broadcast, protecting data is important. I think everybody understands that. If cost or complexity has been a limiting factor in you or one of your customers or your uh, colleagues being able to do the type of DR to get the recovery time and reporting objectives that they're interested in getting, there are solutions, as we've discussed today, from a host-based perspective as well as iSCSI SAN solutions from Drobo that allow you to lower that entry cost to do uh, disaster recovery. And it can be done both easily and affordably with the uh, solutions that we discussed today. Thank you for your participation. You have the information there to send us any more questions that you might have. And you can come back to our website, www.drobo.tv, and get uh, a replay of today's broadcast, as well as information on additional questions that come in. I want to thank you, Joe, for uh, spending some time with us from Vision Solutions and providing some expertise in the area of disaster recovery uh, for today's broadcast. Absolutely. Thanks, Mario. And again, thanks for having me today. Until next time, happy sharing.